All right, y'all, this is Black Ink Crew New York. This is season six, episode 18. Um, it's the continuation of, you know, Donna versus Sky. And um, it did look like from last week, like Donna had the upper hand, um, but it didn't, it wasn't really too much for real, for real. You know, everybody got, you know, in between them and broke them up. Um, Sky's wig did come off. Um, you know, Donna is like, you know, I beat your ass before I beat your ass again. And Sky's like, you know, you ain't never beat my ass. And, you know, uh, Donna is like, you hit me first. You know, um, you know, I'll fight you back every motherfucking time. Like, you hit me first, and I didn't even want to fucking fight your ass. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, Sky, you know, a weird change of events ends up happening because Sky's like, you know what? You got it or whatever. And she's like, you know, I don't even know why I did that. And she's telling Donna to come here, and, you know, they hug and everything. And I'm just like, the fuck is going on here? <laughs> Like, they hugging, and, you know, Sky, she starts crying and apologizing to Donna. She's like, I don't even know why I did that. Like, I'm sorry, D. Like, you know, I just feel like a fucked up person. And I'm just like... I mean, at least she knew that she was wrong, but... Man, I don't know. Y'all know how I feel about, you know, a motherfucker that's supposed to be my friend trying to, you know, put hands on me and stuff like that. So, I mean... And it's not like Sky and Donna been friends for, like, you know, forever for them to, like, well, for Donna to, just, you know, just kind of forgive her so quickly. So, I don't know how to feel about that. But, you know, they hugged and made up and everything. So, uh, you know, whatever. So, uh, then we get, oh, shit, the next day or whatever. He's still pissed off about, you know, um, them trying to do the whole DNA test on his daughter and everything. And we get a blast from the past. He meets up with Puma, and um, Puma look alright. You know, he he look he look alright. You know what I mean? Um, but shit, he's like that. He doesn't give a fuck. Um, if C's is pissed off with him, um, about seeing Puma and this, that, and the third, and he's talking about how he let C's dictate his relationship with Puma for too long, and you know, he's like that. Um, even though, um, he don't talk to Puma like he used to, he's still cool with him and still follow him on social media. And I'm just like, why would you let a grown ass man dictate who you going to be friends with? And, you know, just because them two fell out, you know what I'm saying? Why would you allow C's to dictate whether you going to be Puma's friend or not just because you work for him? Like, but child, uh, whatever. So anyways, you know. Shit, he takes Puma outside and everything so they could talk privately, um, you know, because they, they were at um, Puma's shop. And um, he's telling Puma about what happened at his party and everything for the baby. And, you know, he talks about how, you know, I know, Puma, you dealt with this firsthand because C's, you know, tried to say the same thing about Puma's baby, with, you know, with Kwani or whatever. And they flash back. And I, I had forgot all about that. I forgot that C's... Um, said the same thing about, uh, Puma's baby, um, with Kwani or whatever. So, you know, um, shit pretty much tells him, you know, um, black ink is toxic and everything. And, you know, Puma is like, I mean, I thought you were, all y'all was good over there. You know what I'm saying? And shit is like, listen, you know, pretty much I want to work for you now or whatever. And, um, Puma is like, listen, you know, you my homie, and um, I always said if you ever needed a spot here, you could come here, but I know how C's is, I know that he's petty, and I don't want them to feel like I stole you from them, or, you know, whatever, whatever, so, you know, let me think about it, and I'll get back to you, you know what I'm saying, and, um, yeah, it's just kind of like, you know, if I was Puma, I would have been like, uh, you know, you my homeboy and everything, but it's like, you know, um, we barely talk like we used to or whatever, and now that, um, you and C's is on the outs, now you want to come work for me. I got, if I was Puma, I would have kind of looked at, um, oh shit, a little shiftless, but that's just me, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but anyway, so, um, we're at 1 13th. Ted is pretty much confronting them about, you know, trying to swab the baby at the party. Like, you know, I understand we all kind of made jokes and felt like that that baby wasn't oh shits. But, you know, like y'all dumb as fuck for trying to really sit up here and swab the baby at the party out of all places and everything. So as they're having that conversation, you know, Tati calls Mel to the back or whatever. And um, 
Tati tells Mel, listen, I spoke to your client, Shakira, and you guys remember Shakira from earlier this season. She was the one who complained about um about her not being happy with the tattoo that Mel did on her and everything, you know. And um Mel is like, this the same bitch that, you know, was complaining about the tattoo I did and it hadn't even finished healing or whatever this day and the third. So Tati is like, well, um, she's like, well, listen, you know, um, Shakira is happy with the tattoo now. Mind you, this is months later after, you know, the tattoo has, you know, completely healed or whatever. And Tati is telling, um, like I said, Tati tells Mel that, yeah, she's happy with the tattoo now and everything. But, you know, uh, I, you know, there's something else that I want to tell you, you know, Donna was hitting her up about getting the tattoo fixed or whatever and she wants donna to stop calling trying to reach out to her and everything and you know tati is like i don't know how you want to handle that or whatever and mel is like oh i'm about to go confront this bitch right now <laughs> and mel you know she confronts donna and everything and you know um donna of course you know she throwing her insults or whatever like you know i mean um i was just trying to help or whatever this then there's like donna you knew what the fuck you was doing like come the fuck on you know what i'm saying and, um, I mean, and listen, I got four tattoos. Now, personally, me, I was, um, satisfied with each tattoo that I got, um, once it was finished. But that's not always the case. And like I said earlier in the season, I've seen, you know, Mel's other work, you know, whatever, whatever. Um, that wasn't Mel's best tattoo, but, um, I do know people who have gotten tattoos from people and they weren't really happy with it when they first got it. But as time went along and the tattoo finished peeling and healed up, you know, um, they really, like the tattoo was brought out, you know what I'm saying? Like they, um, really were able to see the details in the tattoo and they, you know, uh, really started to like the tattoo and everything. So it does happen sometimes, you know, depending on what you get and where you get it at, whatever, whatever. Um, but you know, um... Donna is like, you know, well, none of my clients left unhappy while you sitting up here trying to talk about my tattoos being garbage and this, that, and the third. And, I mean, Donna's last couple of tattoos were all right. You know, I give her that. But it's like, girl, you are not on Mel's level. You're really not. You know what I'm saying? And um, Mel is like, bitch, please, you know, um, your Death Valley or whatever with your tattoos. And, you know, um, my c a client just called up here and said that she liked the tattoo and to stop hitting her up or whatever, this, that, and the third. And Donna is like, well, um, bitches love my tattoos at first sight or whatever, this, that, and the third. And Donna is like, you know what, I'm going to leave before I end up um, knocking the shit out you or whatever she has said. And I'm just like, <sighs> like, yeah, Donna, you know what you was doing. You was being on some underhanded shit. And then if for you to obviously still calling the girl and everything, even after you apologized to Mel about the whole money situation and got her to come back to the shop, you still, it seemed like, I guess, you know, you still was kind of doing some shisty, shady shit behind the scenes or whatever. So, um, I could understand Mel being irritated with that or whatever, but, um, yeah, you know, that's that with them. So then we have, oh shit, confronting C's. They meet, they, uh, meet out somewhere He's confronting C's about, you know, what happens at the party. You know, C's tries to dap him up and shit like, you know, no, we good, partner. You know, I don't want to dap you up and nothing like that. I just want to confront you about what happened at my party and everything. And C's is like, listen, I don't got nothing to do with that. You know, and shit is like, yeah, but you could have stopped them. Like, you're the boss and everything. I mean, which, in a way, yeah, C's could have tried to, well... C's didn't know. C's didn't know that they were going to try to do, um, at least far as I know, anyway, C's didn't know that they were trying to do, like, an actual DNA test at his, you know, at his party or whatever, but, um, so I guess, yeah, I guess really it was nothing really C's could have done because, like I said, far from what I could tell, C's wasn't aware that they was doing that shit, you know what I'm saying? So, um... Yeah, I don't know what, I don't know, I like, I just don't know what to say because I don't really know what shit wanted him to do because, like I said, C's didn't know that they were, you know, trying to do that right then and there. You know what I'm saying? But um, I will say, though, that C's do let these people at this shop get away with a lot and he don't really put his foot down like he should. He do kind of just let them do uh whatever they want to. You know what I'm saying? Um, But then, too... 
it's not like they were at the shop. They were at a, you know, this is like after hours. You know, this is like an after hours type of event. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I just, you know, I don't really know what to say, you know, about that. But, you know, um, shit is like, listen, I wanted y'all to meet my daughter. And, you know, y'all disrespected her pretty much by doing that shit. You know what I'm saying? And shit is like, listen, you know, I'm going to go work for Puma. And y'all already know how C's is. He's pissed off. And he's like, you said what? You gonna work for a who? Puma. You know? And uh, he's like, you know, all this shit that I ever did for you. And, you know, um, I did this for you. I did that for you. And, you know, um, pretty much you trying to work for my enemy now. And this, that, and the third. Like, now you trying to help out my enemy. And shit is like. I'm helping out myself. And C's is like, you know, um, I did more shit for you than anybody else, including your family. And, you know, if you go over there with him, you're dead to me at this point. And, you know, that's that with them. Um, on, on one hand, it do kind of seem like shit is doing, doing that, trying to work with, work with Puma to kind of spite C's and everything. But at the same time, sees you can't tell somebody who to work for or whatever. Now, granted, there are other tattoo shops in New York that, you know, uh, shit could go work for. Why well, sit up here and work for somebody that, you know, you know is controversy with, you know, black ink or whatever. But like I said, sees you can't tell no grown-ass man who they can and can't work with or be mad because he's going over here with Puma and everything. So it's like, I see both sides of it. You know what I'm saying? But, um, yeah, you know. So now we're at, we're back at 113th. Uh, sees he comes in pissed off and he tells them about, oh shit and everything and him working for Puma. And they all like, what? You know, and Ted, he, of course, you know, he co-signing with C's and like, you know, that's some sucker shit or whatever. But it was some sucker shit for motherfuckers to sit up here to try, you know, try to take a fucking DNA test of his daughter, especially at um, a party that he planned for his daughter for everybody to um, see her and everything. You know what I'm saying? So, um... But Ted, you know, he said the same thing that I said, that there are other shops, though. You know what, I'm, you know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, they like, well, I mean, fuck it. You know, fuck him. You know, uh, you know, we ain't going to say his name in the shop no more. And at least we ain't got to deal with Nikki no more. So, it is what it is. Um, Tat, um, Tati, Lord. <laughs> Tati... She gets um a notification, I think, from Instagram or something like that. And she's like, yo, this girl is tagging us in this picture about her getting an affection from, you know, our shop or whatever, from one of her tattoos and everything. And sees, and I do, I think I remember seeing this on the blogs or whatever a while back. Sees is like that this is the same client who got tatted, I guess, by some guest tattoo artist that they had in the shop one time. And, you know, she came back a year later saying that she got an, you know, that she got an infection and now she's back once again. Like, what the fuck is going on here? You know what I'm saying? So he tells them, you know, to handle that or whatever, try to get that shit off the blogs and everything. So then, like, uh, later on or the next day or whatever, you know, um, him and Tati, they're addressing the bad tattoo and everything and how he's trying to do like a quality control and, you know, them critiquing each other's tattoos and them showing, um, I guess, each other how they're, you know, setting up for somebody to get a tattoo or whatever, whatever. Donna comes in and he tells her, you know, what's going on and everything. And so um, Tati... She wants to do, like, I guess a practice setup with a uh, male and Donna. And I'm like, why would you sit up here and try to get them two to do something together? And you know that they got this issue right now. So, you know, uh, Mel is like, I ain't doing shit with her, you know, uh, because she has no work. And, you know, she scratches um, on people's skin every now and again or whatever. I ain't gonna lie. I kind of laughed at that, you know. And, um... Donna is like, yo, why is you still coming for me and everything? And Mel is like, you know, it probably was that blackout tattoo that you did on that lady's leg and everything um, that, you know, that's complaining or whatever, this, that, and the third. And it's like, Mel, uh, stop now because 
that's not the tattoo that that's the issue or whatever like that that's not the tattoo that they're talking about like that you just really you know trying to cause controversy or whatever i mean we all know that that tattoo that donna did was a fucked up ass tattoo but that's not the tattoo that's called in the question in here but anyway so you know um her you know donna and mel they're going back and forth or whatever yada 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 and um Donna tells her, if you um, take another step, I'll smack the shit out you and everything. And Mel, you know, of course, you, y'all know Mel ain't going to sit up here and try to fight nobody. So she, you know, leaves because she's over it. So then later on or whatever, um, they have a client or who they think is a client come in. And, you know, she comes in or whatever, and she says that she's a tattoo version. You know, she's never had a tattoo, but she's heard about black ink and, you know, um, she wants to get with the best tattoo client and that she heard that C's is the best or whatever. I said, I know you fucking lying. Because <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, Bay is the best tattoo artist in that shop. I'm just saying, okay? So, you know, um, he's like, you know, so what you had in mind to get or whatever. And she's like, you know, actually, I had a design or whatever that I wanted you to see. And listen, the minute that she came into that shop, it was just something about her body language that I knew it was some bullshit when she came up in there saying that, oh, you know, I'm a tattoo version and, you know, I think I want to get a big tattoo or whatever this day and the third. So she, you know, goes into her purse acting like she's about to pull out the design, but really she serves him some papers. And um, the papers is from the girl that got the infected tattoo or whatever and she's suing for um fifty thousand dollars and you know he's pissed off of course and everything he burns the papers and um tati she's trying to put the fire out because you know he put the papers like in this trash can and you know set them on fire tati is trying to put the fire out or whatever and uh the fire ends up is the fire ends up starting back up <clears throat> so they all run out the shop and everything. They got to call, you know, uh, the firefighters or whatever, or the firemen to put out the fire or whatever. And that was the episode, you guys. I'm sorry it wasn't really a lot. Um, and you guys know this. I didn't even talk about Sky and her bullshit with this goddamn kid because I... I, I like I just don't care at this point. Um, and I've been hearing that this guy Elliot that she's talking about having this so called kid with, she's been knowing him for a while now. She ain't just meet him, like she's been knowing him for a while. So yeah, this is definitely all for a storyline. But um make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure you guys come back and I'll see you guys in the next video. Alright, y'all. Bye.